we give you the adoration. Blessed be your name. Honor to your name. Breathe upon this service tonight. Thank you because you are God. Thank you for your glory. for your glory. Thank you for your power. Thank you for a night in which you will show us that the silver is yours that the glory of this letter house shall be greater than of the former. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name. Go ahead and give the Lord a big clap of hand. Shake three hands around you and welcome them to the presence of the Lord. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the presence of the Lord. Happy city. And excited to be here tonight. Say louder, amen. amen. How many of us are hearing that song for the first time? That's right. Let me see your hand. Just wave it. You are hearing that song for the first time. <laughs> yes. Now, the reason why you are hearing it for the first time is that the songs are so many that you don't remember that you have ever heard it. <laughs> The glory of the letter house. The convention where we had the glory of the letter house, the greater glory. That was one of the songs of the convention. And I am sure you were there. It was a sp <laughs> I'm sure you were there, or I'm sure at least you watched it. So me and the music director will sit down tomorrow and go through all the songs to identify new ones. That, <laughs> that is the ones we have sung before but we cannot remember. Maybe we sang it only once and then refund it back so that uh, it is no longer new to you. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Alright, let's look at the passage from where that song came. Haggai chapter 2 verse 6 all the way to verse Nine. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land. I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come. And I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than of the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. Somebody shout the Lord and say, Amen. If the New International Version is available of that passage, I would like to read it or the Good News Translation. 
I will fill this house. This is what the Lord Almighty says, in a little while I once more shake the heavens and the earth, the sea and the dry land. I will shake all nations and what is desired by all nations will come and I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord of hosts, Almighty. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, declares the Lord Almighty. The glory of this letter. All right, let, let's see the Good News Bible, if you have it, please. Before long, I will check heaven and earth, land and sea. I will overthrow all nations and their treasures will be brought here and the temple will be filled with wealth. That's what I was looking for. The temple will be filled with wealth. All the silver and gold of the world is mine. The new temple will be more splendid than the old one. And there I will give my people prosperity and peace. We came from the old temple to this new temple. In this new temple, he says he will give us prosperity and peace. You can also call it divine finances. Our objective is to unravel the secrets of supernatural wealth and supplies. We may be dealing with this throughout the whole of the month. Looking at different angles of it as the Lord helps us. On Sunday, we saw that our God is a supernatural supplier. Our God is a divine provider. From the miracle, miraculous supply of manna in the wilderness, water from the rock, the raven feeding the prophet, Multiplication of the meal for the Shunammite woman. Multiplication of the oil for the meal for the widow of Zarephah. Multiplication of oil for the widow of the prophet. The money in the mouth of the fish. What are turning into wine and so on and so forth. We see that our God is a supernatural supplier. But what is important to note is that the products of God are anchored on the principles of God. The products of God are conveyed by the principles of God. align with his principles you access his products in Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1 to 2 he said if you shall hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord your God to observe and to do all his commandments which I commanded this day then the Lord will set you on high above all the nations of the earth and then all these blessings shall come on you So there are principles that guarantee products. There are guidelines that guarantee his goodness. In Isaiah chapter 48 verse 17, he says, I am, thus saith the Lord, thy redeemer, the holy one of Israel. I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth to profit and lead you in the way which thou should go. In verse 21, okay, verse, verse 18, you say, oh, that you had hearkened to my commandments, then your peace would have been like a river and your righteousness would have, would have been like the waves of the sea. In verse 20, your seed would have been 
like the sand and the offspring of your bowels like the gravel thereof. So his commandments guarantee his consignment. God will give you commandments to facilitate his consignment to you. He said they thirsted not when he led them. They thirsted not when he led them. When he led them. In Psalm 103 verse 7 the Bible said he made his ways known to Moses and his acts to the children of Israel. To experience his acts you must operate his ways. The ways of God command the acts of God. If we must experience the acts of God, we must operate his ways. He said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. When God leads, people take the lead in life. It is not possible to lack behind in the leading of God. He leadeth me beside the still waters. If God is going to cause you to see provision, he will give you instruction. His instructions are connected to his provision. Those instructions, those principles, those secrets are the things we are here to look at from tonight. They are time tested. Abraham proved them. Isaac proved them. Solomon proved them. Moses proved them. And people in our generation have proved them and they are real. What is the secret number one? Love for God. Love for God meaning a heart for God. A heart for God. Which also means the God first mentality. Solomon's journey into the world, the world of supernatural wealth. His journey started and Solomon loved the Lord. First Kings chapter 3 verse 3. Solomon loved the Lord. And Solomon loved the Lord. That was enough. His journey into the world of supernatural wealth began and Solomon loved the Lord. Love for God moved him to sacrifice. Sacrifice to God provoked divine visitation. Divine visitation provoked his request for wisdom. And then wealth came that he could not do, he didn't know what to do with. And Solomon loved the Lord. Josiah, the king of Israel, wangled his way into the world of supernatural wealth on the platform of a heart for God. First Kings, Second Chronicles, chapter 26, and in verse 5, the Bible said, He sought God. In the days of Zechariah, who had understanding in the visions of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. Go ahead. God made him to prosper. And he went forth and warred against the Philistines and break down the wall of Gath and the wall of Jabne and the wall of Ashdod and built, built cities. People were building houses. This one was building cities. He built cities about Ashdod and among the Philistines. And God helped him against the Philistines and against the Arabians and, and that dwelt in Gubal and the Mehunims. 
And the Ammonites gave gifts to Uzziah. And his name spread abroad. Even to the entering in of Egypt. For he strengthened himself exceedingly. Moreover, Uzziah built towers in Jerusalem at the corner gate and at the valley gate and at the turning of the wall and fortified them. He built towers in the desert. He dig many wells for he had much cattle both in the low country and in the plains. Husbandmen also and vine dressers in the mountains and, and, and in camel for he loved husbandry. Moreover, Uzziah had a host of fighting men that went out one hour. You just keep on going on and on and on. He began with it and he sought the Lord. In the days of Zechariah, who had the understanding of the visions of the Lord. And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. See, it is not possible to seek God. And not be sought after by gold. When you seek God, good must seek you. You don't beg for it. When you seek God, good must seek you. It's not possible to be otherwise. The question, the problem is that there are many who claim to be seeking God and God is aware that they are not seeking him. There are many who claim to love God and God is aware that a business can take them out of church. An appointment with the president can take them out of, prayer, out of their prayer schedule. Anything can take them out. There is nothing serious about their relationship with God. Nothing. Nothing. Our master Jesus gives seeking God and his kingdom as a condition for the addition of all things. Matthew chapter 6 and in verse 33 I was giving you examples. He said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. He didn't say seek money, seek houses, seek name, seek fame, seek popularity. He said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. All, this, all the things people are dying for. Am I communicating? See, the value you allocate to God determines the value you access on it. The value, the value, the value you give to God will determine the value you get on it. You won't, you won't, you won't struggle for value. You won't struggle. You won't struggle to be valued. I don't know the name of any phone except maybe the iPhone. The iPhone 1, iPhone 2, iPhone 3, iPhone 4, iPhone 5, iPhone 10. Every time they change the new phone, it becomes a, a, a challenge to me because I don't, want, I don't have the time to start struggling to understand the new phone. But there are those, that is their life. They can sell their body to buy a phone. That's their life. They can do anything to buy a new car. Am I communicating? I want us to come to the point where you are seeking God in reality. Come to the point where you love God and God knows you love him. And the devil knows you love him. And the forces of hell know you love him. We're dedicating the project in, in Kubwa yesterday, two days ago. Senator of FCT was there in person and then um, the me honorable member representing the constituency and then various other honorable members of, of the federal house, the chief traditional ruler of the place and the local government chairman and others. The honorable member representing the Abuja Municipal Area Council Stroke Buari Federal Constituency was there who said 
This is what we are supposed to be doing that the pastor and the church are doing now. He said, normally we are meant to do a project and then ask the pastor to come and help us pray on it and dedicate it. Now he is the one that has done the project. He has asked us to come now. I don't know what to do now. <laughs> he said, I don't know what role to play. I don't know what is my role now. <laughs> <laughs> it was too funny. <laughs> is it can I pray? Is it prayer I'm to pray here now or what? <laughs> oh my God. It was very, very exciting. Children in the school were just wild in excitement. I asked my wife, I said, Do they know anybody knows us here? Just The people of the world, they have the way to, of pursuing their own things. The people of the kingdom, we have our way of pursuing what, of, of, of getting at what the people of the world sweat to get. Our number one is love for God. When you give God your affection, he makes you his attention. Give him your affection. I mean, God made us in his image. You don't take for granted people who love you genuinely. You don't take for granted people who like you genuinely. You don't take for granted people who celebrate you. You don't take them for granted. I mean, anybody who say, oh, you are looking fine, or your dress is nice, or something, or just, small, it, they catch your attention. As it is in the physical, so it is in the spirit, because God made us in his image. You give him your affection. He makes you his attention. Attention for provision. Attention for distinction. Attention for decoration. It just shows the world that this person has moved me. When you touch his heart, you move his hand. Did you hear what I just said? When you touch his heart, you move his hand. You move his hand. You move his hand. You move his hand. And the movement of his hand equals massive supply. One day my wife traveled to see our children and she did so many things and it's just here and there for children, here and there, here and there. I say, you know what? It's both, both of us that gave birth to the children. There is nowhere it is written that it is only the woman that must run around for children's purpose. Is it written anywhere? But you are taking care of the children. Thank you for doing the, uh, our work. My work and your work. Thank you for doing it for us. For that purpose. I want to give you an allowance monthly I call child care allowance. say child i say yes child child care allowance you are doing it so you can do it very well it's no small allowance so i told the children i told the children i said your, your mother has allowance for your sake am i communicating so, I, and i did i have not heard it from anybody it's not as if i was trying to copy anybody it just came spontaneously. I am touched. She said, no, you don't need to bother now. It's my children too. I said, yes, it's both of us. It's your children too. But it's my, what of my own role? I need to play my role. See, am I communicating at all? That is a shadow compared to what God feels when you move him. When you move him. When you do things that he feels. When you touch him by any action, when you move his heart, you see, you see, if you being evil know how to give good gift to your, to, your, to your children, how much more shall your heavenly father give the Holy Ghost? The meaning of that is, any good a human being can do to another is a shadow compared to what Jehovah can do. 
in similar circumstances. Any good a human being can do for another is shadow. Please go ahead and love God genuinely. Don't be fake. Be real. Let God know. Let your wife know. Let your children know. Let your family know. Let your enemies know that this person is madly in love with Jehovah and is sold out. If I preach on the love of God alone, I might go into more details, but because of time, let's go to point number two. Love for God. Number two is trust in God. Trust in God. Trust in God here, we're talking about looking absolutely unto God and absolutely away from everyone else, including yourself, is a secret of supernatural supply. Looking absolutely to God and absolutely away from any human source is a secret of supernatural supply. You heard the testimony I was talking to the alright, I'll come to the testimony of the man from um, Namibia. You know, Abraham's ruggedness that's my first example. Abraham's ruggedness in looking up to God and away from man was a secret of his wealth. Looking ruggedly to God, looking away from man was a secret of his wealth. When Abraham went to rescue Saul, his Lot and, his, and, and, and the rest of the people that were taken captive, in Genesis chapter 14 verse 21, the king of Sodom came out. Back up to verse 20. Nineteen. Please back up a bit. All right. All right. Let's let's go back to verse 20. Blessed most high God which had delivered thine enemies into thy hand and he gave him tithes of all. Now, and the king of Sodom said unto Abraham. Now, I think a previous verse, I'm trying to look for the verse. The king of Sodom went to meet Abraham. That alone, as Abraham was returning from the slaughter of the kings, the king of Sodom went to meet Abraham, not the other way around. Verse 17. And the king of Sodom went out to meet him after his return. That should say something to us. The man was a covenant man who was not running around king because he was king. Abraham carried something that was heavy enough for the king to go to meet him. Okay, now look at the, the verse 21 we're trying to read now. And the king of Sodom said unto Abraham, Give me the persons and take the goods to yourself. And Abraham said to the king of Sodom, I have lifted up my hand unto the Lord, the most high God, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will not take from a tread even to a shoe lashet. I will not take anything that is yours. In case you say, I have made Abraham rich. I can't. I lifted up my hand. Jehovah is my source. What he cannot give me, may I not have. Where he cannot take me, may I not go. What he cannot do for me, may it remain undone. I don't want to come to a point where any mortal human being will say, I am the one who made him. When God heard that from Abraham, God said, is that what you have, he said, you have lifted up your hand. That is, Abraham was not saying that this is what I am doing now. He said, I did it since. I lifted up my hand. I vowed to God that no human being
being can claim to be behind my making. God can use a man as a channel, but no man can be a source. Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? God can use a man as a channel, but no man can be a source. When you make a channel to become your source, you dry up with the channel. Please take your seat. And God decorated Abraham. At another time, I think it was in Genesis earlier on, or no, later on, when Abraham's wife died, he told them, give me the cave of Machpelah. Let me bury my wife. They said, take it free of charge. He said, not me. No, 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 no. Don't pity me. Don't give me anything on the basis of pity. I can get things by favor, but not by pity. Tell me the price of the land. And they told him a hundred shekels. He weighed it according to current money. Scripture. Am I communicating? The challenge that many of us have in this, in this world, especially in the journey of life, is that we look too much to man. Consciously or unconsciously, and Jehovah, who is a jealous God, when you decide to make a man your source, he will leave you and that man to yourself. There are churches where one man pocketed the whole church. Since it's this major financier of church, this is the major giver in the church. The destiny of a whole church is tied into the tiny pocket of one man. We have never had such, will never forever. Am I communicating at all? Take your seat. Am I speaking to anybody at all? I want you to believe it. I want you to behave it. I want you to act it. Coming to the point where you look up to God ruggedly. I learned my lesson growing up as a young man. Through several sources. First from my father. In the days where, when we grew up, he had means, vehicles, he had money like water. <laughs> then he would say very rugged things. He said, he, his father died when he was like 12 years old there about. He didn't know his father. Yet, he is where he is. You who know your father, where will you be? He said he started business at the age of 18. And he became very massive. You are 18 now. What are you doing with your life? <laughs> nobody should look at my wealth because nobody struggles to give another. Young men were getting very, very angry at such utterances. And um, for me, it was sharpening my mind to depend only on God. Then my mother was in the matter for us. And he said, don't look at your father's money. Your father has many children. If they are to divide the money, how much will reach you? Face your life. <laughs> he said, face your life. Look at, don't look anything. Don't look at anything here. Wow. I looked away from everything. And then I went a step further. When I was in second year medical school, going to third year, I came back home one day and I let my father know that from now forward, I'm not returning back for money. So I did second, third year, fourth year, fifth year, sixth year, graduated before I came back home. No more pocket money, nothing. That phase of my life taught me the ruggedity of depending on God. Of being able to have just one source. I can tell you the truth. I fared better than when I was looking back at home. 
Am I communicating at all? It things like begging and borrowing couldn't exist in my vocabulary. Couldn't. Can't look at somebody and be eyeing what he has and be wishing he gives it to me. Impossible. Because in Jer Jeremiah told us in Jeremiah 17, please take your seat. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 5. Look at that. He said it is a cost to trust in man. He said, thus said the Lord, cost be the man that trusted in man and maketh flesh his arm and whose heart departed from the Lord. He said, when you trust in man, you are relying on the arm of flesh and your heart has already left God. When you look at a governor, you look at a senator, and you look at someone that says, you are my only help, your heart has already left God. I've not, I'm not true. I'm reading all the way. Whose heart departed from the Lord. Go to verse 5 again. Thus said the Lord, cursed be the man that trusted in man. He, who, he makes flesh his arm. Whose heart departed from the Lord. He said, he shall be like the heath in the desert. He shall not see when good cometh. He shall inhabit the dry places of the wilderness. In a salt land that is not inhabited. What is his offense? He is looking up to man. Look at the contrary. Is it? The contrary. But blessed is the man who trusted in the Lord. Whose hope. Have you seen people say you are my only hope? That is a wrong statement. Whose hope the Lord is. He shall be like a tree planted by the waters. That spreadeth out her roots by the river. He shall not see when heat is coming. When they say recession, when they say fuel price is going down, global crude oil price is crashing. That doesn't mean nothing to him. He shall not see when heat coming, but her leaf shall be green. He shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. That is the man who trusts in God. The pastor who talked from Namibia just now, he said, I was preaching in the minister's conference. And I said, Pastor, what are you doing borrowing members' car up and down? Did they, pastor you to, did they, did they call you to oppress them? Is it, is, the, is, it, is, it, is it for the sake of riding and driving members' car? Today you borrow this one's car. Tomorrow you borrow another person's car. The pastor is a blessing, not a burden. A blessing to the people, not a burden on the people. You are seeking the good of people, not trying to see how, what good the people can do to you. <laughs> he heard the word and returned back to Namibia. And the car they used to bring to him to borrow, to borrow, he said, no need. I don't need it. The God who called me will provide for me. How many cars within a week or two weeks? Two cars. When he looked away from man, God said, you heard very well. Take, take, take. That testimony preached my message. When he looked away from man, God said, take. Take your seat. I'd like you to behave it and let God see it. This building was built in the time of the worst recession of this country. Things are still happening and nobody is feeling. Are you under any form of pressure? All the roads and the things we are talking about commissioning, did anybody put you under any pressure? One day, one lady, tall lady, American, came to our church in area one. Lanky, walking like this. Say, Pastor, just wanted to find out what needs the church has. Can be of help and support the church and be of help to the church. Just give to the church. You know, people from that part of the world can be very, very arrogant. They think that they have everything. I told her, I said, we don't have need. If you have need, let us know. I was very, very rugged because I wanted God to know that he is the one we are depending on. I said, everything you will end till you die cannot do anything here.
my, our, my, our, my secretary sent me a text message just before I came into this service. Somebody sent him a text message and the person said, Greetings. I will want to support your ministry financially. Kindly share your bank details. So the secretary said, my proposed response are, greetings, Dunamis Church is a church of Christ, the work of God, and no human being can ever support God. So we don't need no such support from you. Thank and be blessed. I told him that reply is too mild. <laughs> what an insult. What an insult. Who are you? Like they say in Nigeria, who are you, Re? To say you want to support God. Uza wanted to support God, he died. When the ark of God was shifting, Uza stretched his hand. I said, I sent him a, a, a better reply. You and everything you represent, you are too infinitesimal. To support the work of the almighty God. Kindly direct your ridiculous gestures. Elsewhere. <laughs> direct your laughable, laughable, ridiculous gesture elsewhere. Don't let anybody take the glory of God around you. Take your seat. Don't mistake me. Don't misunderstand me. God will use people as channels, but God remains the source. All the glory must be to the Lord. Only He is worthy of our praise. No man should give glory to himself all the glory must be to the Lord somebody can say greetings in the Lord's name or good afternoon I am so and so person texting from so and so place I want the blessing of being a part of what God is doing through giving. Would you please let me know how to go about it? Oh, I see the great work of God going. I want an opportunity to be involved in one way or the other. Can I be directed, please? Is that not more polite? Is that, is that not more, more humble? And if he's a Christian and he has a Christian language, I want the privilege of sowing, the privilege of giving into the work of God. Please direct me. <laughs> so I want to support, share your bank details. Maybe it's a 419. And he wants to use the bank account number for something. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You are going places. I said you are going places. If you are saying amen, say loud amen. amen. Let me say it like this. When God is your source, you never run out of resources. When God is your source, you never run out of resources. But if man is your source, you never get enough resources. Never. If you are rooted in God, you never lack fruit. But if you are rooted elsewhere, fruit is never guaranteed. A 
Is God speaking to anybody here at all? I like you to hate begging, hate it with a passion. There is no dignity in begging. Hate borrowing, hate it with a passion. Don't, 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 don't look down on God and molest your life. It's better at times to do the laborers' work where they give you daily pay than to be hanging around looking for who will give you five naira. Make your faith rugged. Ay, 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 ay. It's a new day for you. Trust in God. And when God sees, and that, that's the kind of thing God sees in, in some of us. And it makes things to happen effortlessly. Financial flow, resources flow, just effortlessly. Trust in God. Trust in God. That was number two. Our time is gone, so I'll take just one number and then we'll continue from here. Faith in God is number three. Faith in God. Faith in God. Somebody is wondering what is the difference. I, I, you'll see the difference shortly. Faith in God is a magnet of supernatural supplies. When you see people of faith, most people of faith are also people of prosperity. Actually, they are a twin. Kenneth Copeland is standing on faith and prosperity. Bishop David Oedipo. Kenneth E. Hagen. They, they, they walk hand in glove. And that is true because Abraham, the father of faith, was the father of the blessing. Galatians chapter 3 verse 9, it says, So then, they that be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. They that be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Galatians chapter 3 verse 14. It says that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So blessings are transmissible by faith. Did you hear what David said in Psalm 27 verse 13? I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living that is to believe is to see. I had fainted unless I had believed to see. Believing precedes seeing. You cannot see what you cannot believe for. Believing precedes seeing. I believe to see. The limit of your belief is the limit of your supply. I had believed to see. The Bible said, let it be unto you according to your faith. It is unto every man according to their faith. Unto every man according to their faith. According to their faith. According to their faith. Am I communicating at all? I have seen miracles, signs and wonders by his message. Right from medical school days. I have seen tumors disappeared. In 500 level medical student, somebody who was my classmate in primary school, I came to the ward that time, ward 16. Male ward, it was male medical. And I saw him lying on the bed. Fluffy hair like chicken feather. Bloated tummy. Skin flaking. He had end-stage kidney disease. My classmate from primary school. I looked at him. I called his name. I had to struggle to recognize him because of the way he had transformed. He said, he's the one. I said, what? What is this? He said, he said his kidney has packed up. At that time, it was 20-something maybe years ago. At the time, kidney transplant was not very common here. I don't think they did anything like that. And then dialysis was just barely available. So he was quartered to go. I think he had seven days to go in terms of dying. I looked at him. I said, God will heal you. Prayed with him. I 
came back. Within a week, he was off the bed. I was not a pastor. 500 level medical student. Within a few days, he was discharged. I saw him many, many, many years later. Moving. No kidney transplant, nothing. Fully alive. We saw deaf ears. We saw all manner of miracles. But beloved, when we started this construction, I realized there is a different department of faith for supply. <laughs> a different department of faith. What was utilized for the deaf ear to hear was different. <laughs> That is why you can see a very powerful pastor and very wretched. I mean, he has all manner of miracles. No money. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. In Hebrews chapter 6 verse 12, he said that you be not slothful, but be followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. So, there are things that you cannot inherit without faith. When we talk, talk about trust, we are, we are saying, I depend only on God. If God can give me, I don't need anybody to give me. When we are talking about faith, we are saying, it is written, it is stated, and so it is doable, and it must be done. Am I communicating? Trust means I'm not looking to any man. God is the one I'm standing on. Faith is saying, He said I should shout for joy because I favor his righteous cause. He said I should say continually, let the Lord be magnified and has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. I cannot die poor. What? I need to do in the scripture I am going to do it but I must be loaded Ooh. I wish that somebody would give the Lord a bigger shout of victory take your seat I know you know what faith is all about and I'm going to talk about this again but faith begins with a revelation that is what God said. What he promised his people. You saw it from the scripture. Anything you see from the Bible that charges you up as if you haven't seen it before, that winds you like a new wine, is revelation. It begins with a revelation. Continues with conviction. That revelation brought you to a point where you are convinced beyond confusion that even if the whole people in your family died of poverty, your case is different. You saw something from the Bible that gave you a conviction. That conviction is so rugged that you would doubt your doubt and believe your belief. Begins with a revelation. Somebody here you believe that you cannot declare you don't believe it yet if you are afraid of declaring that you cannot be sick you cannot die poor you can't be cut short before your time you don't believe it enough yet just go and believe it starts with a revelation continues with a conviction Proceeds into declaration and culminates into actions. That is, your behavior is beginning to reflect your believing. That is a way you are behaving based on the revelation you saw in scripture, based on the conviction you have, and then you are declaring, then you are behaving. 
part of that behavior is deliberately refusing to be a beggar deliberately refusing to be to be at anybody's beck and call because of money that behavior proceeds into massive giving and sowing if god says i should if i bring my tithes and i give my offerings the heavens will open i believe it i will act it and when you have the revelation and you have the conviction and you have the declaration and you have the action you will end with the manifestation it must manifest i am not speaking theory i'm speaking my life i'm not speaking theory i kept on tightening and giving when it appeared like it wasn't working but i saw in the scripture that it worked and let god be true and every bastard devil be a liar And it was proved. Overproved. Anytime your faith begins to shake, go and charge it with light. Charge it with light. You know how battery, how, how, um, how, um, what do you call it now? Phone battery is going down. You charge, you charge it with light. Go locate revelations, scriptures, locate messages preached in that line. Lock up yourself and charge, 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 charge. It will inflame your belief to another level. It will reflect in your decrees with force. When you say, I can't die before my time, the devil perceives the force behind the statement. If the light and the faith of that statement is not strong, it determines your response. <laughs> And I'm not the subject is not faith tonight. Am I communicating? Faith in God, which ultimately affects your actions, then affect your outcome. Ultimately. Let me add the fourth point, even though I know that our time is racing, but I let me let me add this. So, so if you have love for God. You have trust in God. You have faith in God. I'll give you an example of faith. About 10 days to the dedication of this sanctuary. <laughs> they gave us bills that was unbelievable. Many, many, plenty, plenty, plenty zeros. I don't need to mention it because many of us we are not at the level where plenty zeros zeros racing towards nine that's plenty I said they should give me the total total bill at least let me have what to present so when they brought it there is no way we can tell Papa Oyedepo that dedication is, is, is not cancelled. It's cancelled because things are, are not completed. There's no way we can send to Maurice Cerullo. There's no way we can send to any, anybody. And everybody, all of us are ready. So finish, it must. We had a little, we had money in reserve. We normally have some reserve. We have money in reserve. The account people say, can we pull the money? The money that was in the reserve was not enough to handle this. So my answer was, no, leave it there. The money to handle this will come. So, we believed God for fresh supply. Within those days, the money came in excess. The one that was meant to be pulled was left. He remained there. Dedication has passed. He entered the next year. He entered the next year. It wasn't touched. Oh, yes. 
that is what came in essence when to join the one that we could we didn't really refuse to touch am i communicating at all that is derogatory of faith There was, there was possibility of borrow from bank. No way. I see somebody shifting levels. Finally, just for the sake of completion, walking in knowledge. Walking in knowledge. Love for God. Trust in God. Faith in God. Walking in knowledge. What knowledge? The knowledge of God. The knowledge of your inheritance in God. The knowledge of how money works. Knowledge. Solomon. One of the richest men that ever lived said this proverbs 13 18 he said poverty and shame shall be to him that refused instruction that refused information poverty and shame will be the portion of the one who refuses to learn who refuses knowledge but he that regarded reproof shall be honored Jeremiah said, Jeremiah chapter 5 verse 4, he connected ignorance with bankruptcy. Therefore I said, surely these are poor. Semicolon, why? They are foolish. Why? For they know not. They know not the way of the Lord, nor the judgment of their God. For that purpose, these are poor. Do you know, beloved, that the most illiterate part of the world are also the poorest? Do you know that massive illiteracy is behind massive underdevelopment and poverty in third world countries? Do you even know that Moving from OND accounting to HND accounting changes your status to some extent. HND to postgraduate diploma in management shifts you up. And then from there to chartered accountant, you are not scattered, you are not battered, you are not, but chartered, not shattered. It shifts your level. I am a young medical doctor. I am at a level. I have passed my primary. I'm, I'm, I'm a resident doctor. Now junior reg. I am at a level. I passed the first part. I'm a senior registrar. I'm at a level. I am now a consultant. Surgeon. I'm at a level. I went for that to do super specialization. I may be in brain surgery and neurosurgery. I shift to another level. Just increasing knowledge. In the realm of the physical, shift people's level. Learning affects earning. Both in the physical and in the spiritual, learning affects earning. To know is to show. <laughs> Am I communicating? What? No. Who God is. Know your rights, your privileges, your inheritance in God to a point where even if the name of your village is witchcraft, you can't stop what is coming to you. Know about money that making money does not mean Go and buy a new suit. It means plunge that money into multiplication avenues. 
until it has multiplied so the extra on top can sponsor your welfare and comfort when you see a really financially intelligent rich man with a car of 10 million he has nothing less than 10 times that amount somewhere either in fixed assets or liquid and I'm not just talking am I communicating but a poor man has 10 million he uses the same 10 million to buy one car and he says he's a rich man he says I have become rich you are not rich at all you are a poor minded person with some money he's looking for money to buy fuel He's looking for money to service the car. He puts the car in front of the house and the house rent increases. The landlord increases the house rent and says, this man has money now. Let him pay more. Knowledge of what to do with money will shift you to another level. I will leave it for the day we talk about walking in wisdom. Stand up on your feet. There are so many people who should have been millionaires now. But the millions entered the house of pepper soup seller. Story buildings in the stomach. <laughs> fashion fashion people consume their money there's nothing is wrong with it but if you can buy it at the appropriate time there was a time in my life as a pastor and a medical doctor I bought suit from the people who spread it on the ground I'm sure you know those people where you have to browse internet to check which one is your size. When you get the suit, you don't need to bother about where is the trouser. It might not have trouser. <laughs> and I iron it, I knock it. Somebody lift your voice and shout, Yes, Lord! And you will not know where the suit came from. In fact, you may be eyeing it, looking for how to buy it. Life is in faces. Men are in sizes. Accept your status by time. There is a house you cannot rent now. Don't rent it. Otherwise, the house will be the one renting you. <laughs> There is a car you can't drive now. Don't buy it. So that the car does not drive you. Am I communicating? There are things they bring to you. They say we are selling something. When they mention the price, just be moving away. Don't waste your time pricing it. There is no need to price it. It doesn't matter where it came from. Say I bought it from America. I don't care even if you bought it from the moon. <laughs> <laughs> when we came to, to to town newly and we're looking for school for our children um, the first child they, 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 they brought about five schools this one is so and so many thousand this one is American school this one is that school this one is that school they brought the list so I, I told my wife the one that we have to go is obvious now it's very obvious the, the one the, the, the least one on the list that is the one we have the money for. It's not a matter of which uh, this school is a very good school. You do have equivalently good money. <laughs> we, we sent our baby to school. The la in whatever we spoke to her from home, the correct one, they will change it in the school. <laughs> so we, 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 we had to change her from the 
the school was so low that the, 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 the uh, school fees was equal to the rate of the teaching. <laughs> we have to change her in a hurry as soon as uh, um, some resources came a little. Just move from that school. It's enough. It's enough. And me and my wife, we speak correct English at home, and then she, they will change it when they go to school. <laughs> wow. But can we go to that school at this level now? Even can we sponsor anybody's child to that school now? No. No. But that was, that was then. Okay? Don't kill yourself then so that you can reach here. Yeah. Just take it easy. And that child now can speak any English you want. Anyone. 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 Are, are you following what I'm saying now? It's a new season for you. Your supply will never lack. Your love for God will shift your level. Your trust in God will end poverty and begging and borrowing. Your faith in God will connect your supplies. And above all, the relevant information you need to change your life. It's coming your way now. Yes. Lift your hands and appreciate God for what you have received. Appreciate him, honor him, adore him. Father, we give you the praise. Father, we give you the honor. Father, we give you the adoration. Father, we give you the worship. 